Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a closer look at a method to spot fake gold and silver coins. For that you need a so-called magnetic scale. I just made my own with a normal scale that goes down to 0.1 milligrams. Put a bottle on top of it, then there's a neodymium magnet that is very strong. On top of that I put a beaker just to just as a table. So if we now put something on top of it, it can physically interact with the scale only through the magnetic field. The physics behind the scale is very easy. There are few types of materials. We have ferromagnetic, diamagnetic and paramagnetic materials. The difference between dia and paramagnetic substances is the interaction with a magnetic field. You see a diamagnetic substance repels the magnetic field, so the field is weaker in the substance. So it gets repelled from the magnet. In a paramagnetic substance the magnetic field gets focused and concentrated in the substance, so the field in it is a little bit stronger than outside of it. So it gets attracted to the magnet. Examples for diamagnetic materials are silver, gold, copper and also water. Examples for paramagnetic substance are for example tungsten, aluminum and tantalum. For example this coin is ferromagnetic so if I put this neodymium magnet to the coin you see it gets attracted. Then we have materials like the silver coin that's diamagnetic so you see the magnet can't hold to it and even it repels the magnet a little bit but of course you can see it because the interaction is very weak. And then there are paramagnetic substances like this tungsten. You see it doesn't interact with the magnet but in reality it gets attracted a little bit to the magnet but again it is very weak so you can spot it. So in theory you should spot a real coin because it's diamagnetic and a fake coin because it's ferro or paramagnetic. Because it mostly is made of iron compounds like for silver fake coins or of tungsten for gold fake coins. Let's see how, uh, how this silver coin, it, it's about one ounce, but silver coins are not made very precise. As you can see the scale shows a positive weight, so it means the coin gets repelled from, from the magnet, so it's diamagnetic. So it should be real silver. So let's try it again with another coin. You see the weight is a little bit different because it's not that precisely made. But you can see it also shows a positive value. So it's also diamagnetic. But the value is different this time. The next coin is even a different weight. It weights a little bit less than the previous coin. It's also positive, so diamagnetic, so it should be silver. This can even weigh what much more than the last one. And you see a positive value, so it's diamagnetic as expected. So let's see the difference between two coins. We have here two different coins. One maple leaf and one Australian crocodile. 
this one is 99.99% pure silver, this only 99.9% silver. So we just put a maple leaf on the scale and you see three and a half milligrams of white, so it's diamagnetic as expected for pure silver. Now the Australian crocodile weights a little bit more and we, if we put it on the magnetic scale now you get a negative number about 24 milligrams so this coin is paramagnetic but this is not a Fey coin the difference is there because this is only 99.9% .9 pure silver and has 10 times more impurities in it than the other coin. And if these impurities are a little bit ferromagnetic, the overall coin gets attracted to magnets quite a little bit. So let's look at this gold coin. This gold coin is 99.99% pure gold. If we place it on the scale, you see a positive number, so it indicates it's diamagnetic, it gets repelled from the magnet, as you would expect from pure gold. But it's only 7 milligrams, so it is very weak, the repulsion. But this time we add tungsten on top of it. And as you can see, the weight barely moves, so you can't really take them apart. So this method doesn't work at all.